This case is a 44-year-old uh, gentleman, a history is follow-up of liver masses. So here we have uh, the liver MRI for this patient. We'll start off looking at our T2-weighted sequences. As we scroll through the T2-weighted sequences, this is a single-shot uh, spin echo uh, sequence, we can see that there are numerous liver lesions scattered throughout the liver. Variable size, some larger than others, some have lobulated borders. We can see that they're fairly hyper intense on this sequence. And I'm just going to sort of look at one representative lesion in order to describe it a little bit more. So if we see this large lesion over here, we can see that the internal content is very T2 hyper intense. But again, we're not going to use this sequence to really judge the uh, T2 signal of any lesion. We're going to use the turbo spin echo sequence over here. And on this one, indeed, look how bright this content is. Of this, uh, of this mass. And if we see this content this bright, looks so similar to CSF, we're going to be um, not too worried about this lesion. It's probably going to be a cyst, maybe a hemangioma, but we're going to look at some of the other imaging sequences to sort that out. Next, we're going to look at the T1 in and out of phase sequence. We're looking for areas of signal loss on the out of phase sequence over here, areas of signal loss on the in phase sequence over here. And if we sort of take a global survey of all these liver lesions, we can see that they look pretty similar in all the imaging sequences. And if we look at that representative lesion in the right hepatic lobe, we can see that it has T1 hypo-intense signal. And that doesn't change between the out-of-phase sequence over here and the in-phase sequence over here. Next up, we're going to look at the pre- and post-contrast sequences. And again, these lesions all on the pre-contrast sequence, look like they're hypo-intense, T1 hypo-intense. We're going to look at that large lesion again. This is the arterial phase image over here. We see that there's no contrast enhancement. Next up, we're going to look at the T1 pre-contrast sequence. We can see all these lesions again have a T1 hypo-intense signal with respect to the liver parenchyma. This large representative lesion, again, very homogeneous in its signal, and T1 hypo-intense uh, with respect to the remaining liver parenchyma, as are the other liver lesions uh, uh, that are present for this patient. And finally, we're going to look at the uh, dynamic post-contrast imaging sequences to assess if there's any internal enhancement within these lesions. And again, we'll look at the representative lesion in the right hepatic lobe. You can see the lesion here on the uh, arterial phase images. We can see the lesion here on the portal venous phase images. And finally here on the equilibrium phase images. And it looks jet black on all these sequences. Um, no enhancement seen. And we can also see that around the rim of it, maybe there's a minimal, minimal imperceptible rim enhancement. And that's OK. But internally inside of it, there's absolutely no enhancement identified. So these findings are compatible with multiple cysts. And given the multiplicity of the lesions, you got to think about autosomal dominant polycystic liver disease. Now, this is a uh, finding that can be seen. It's not that common. It can be seen with other cysts and organs, such as the kidneys, or it can be isolated as, as well. And often patients uh, start off being asymptomatic, so no real symptoms. But as the cysts increase in size, you can start to get pain. Um, like any other cyst, they can rupture and cause hemorrhage, uh, potentially get infected as well. If symptomatic, patients will need to undergo resection or, again, marsupialization. So this is basically uh, multiple liver cysts seen in patients. And typically, we're talking about more than 10 or 20 liver cysts. Um, You've got to start thinking about this, uh, this entity.